The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build bigger ones, larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yogi Berra was a New York Yankees baseball legend. He was a baseball catcher. He was known for his athletic abilities, but also for many famous sayings that he had, which was poor grammar and poor logic. I'll give you two examples. He said, I want all of you to pair up in threes. Can you pair up in threes? A pair is how many? Two. This was another one. This one you've heard. You might have said yourself, I don't know. He said, a nickel ain't worth a dime anymore. Well, if a nickel ain't worth a dime, what about a penny? What's a penny worth? It has no value right now. But the other day, I was at an auto parts store, and as I got out of the car, my eye was caught by this coin on the ground, shiny brand new, it was a penny. I picked it up, and I thought of a news commentator who's since dead, he worked for CBS for many years, he was a humorist, who often reflected on very commonplace things. And one of his commentaries one day that I remembered was, he was contemplating the lowly penny, and this was back 20 years ago or more. So what's the worth, penny worth today? It's negative numbers. But he took a penny, and being in New York City, 
he went to a Grand Central Station and he put a penny on the ground in the Grand Concourse and he watched and observed what would happen to the penny. People walked by it, people walked over it, people kicked it. The cleaners came by and swept it away. Nobody picked up the penny. So, he tried another experiment. He put down a series of coins, penny, nickels, dimes, quarters. Well, people saw that. They picked up the coins. They didn't pick up the penny. What is it worth? But on the penny, there's something very interesting. It's printed on there, in God we trust. It's found on most of the coins. It's found on the currency, too, on the printed bills. In God we trust. So do we trust in God or do we trust in money and its value and what it can purchase for us? Well, today we heard from Koheleth, Ecclesiastes, the Psalms, St. Paul writing to the Colossians, and Jesus. All of them point to one thing. In whom do we trust? What is of value to us? A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes means a churchman. You've heard the word ecclesiastical. It means pertaining to the church. And it begins a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanity says Koheleth. Who is Koheleth? Koheleth is the churchman. Koheleth is a Hebrew word. I think it means a churchman. And this churchman was somebody who thought and contemplated things and wondered what was really important. And he came up with the wisdom that's really foolish to spend all your life accumulating possessions, wealth, that somebody else benefits from, that you don't get to benefit from, because you don't use it. You're so busy acquiring. What did the psalm say? If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The danger of possessions Having things is not a sin. You all have a home, you have a car, you have clothing, you have nice things, you have televisions, you have phones, you have things that make life comfortable. But are those the things that make you happy? They give you pleasure, but pleasure and happiness are not the same thing. You can take drugs and feel great pleasure. You can give yourself into the pleasures of the flesh and have great pleasure. It does not bring you happiness. Jesus in the gospel is stopped by a young man. Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. You know what Jesus answered. Who made me your judge? Your arbiter. And yet, 
it was lawful for a person in those times to go to a rabbi and say, can you help me make a judgment here? But this wasn't a matter of justice. This was something else. And we know it's something else because Jesus did not address him directly, but he addressed all the people. He took the opportunity because it was in public. The man came to Jesus in public. All the people are listening. And Jesus turns to the crowd. And he says, take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. He was teaching the young man. He was teaching all the rest. That it wasn't a matter of justice, but it was a matter of greed. What is greed? Greed is the inordinate desire for possessions, for wealth, for what money can buy. The more you have, the more you want. The more you want, the more you spend effort and time in acquiring and possessing. Just like the man in the parable who had plenty, he had sufficient, but he had a great harvest. So he said, what am I going to do? I don't want to lose the harvest. I don't want to sell it. I don't want to give it to other people who might have need of it. I know what I will do. I will build bigger barns, and then I will have enough, more than enough. Then I can sit back and be merry and rest and be secure. And Koheleth and the Book of Wisdom and Jesus, who is wisdom, tells us there's no security in possessions. How much money do we spend on security? in this country on securing what you have. Oh, you think you have a, a life insurance or you have medical insurance, and yet when you get seriously sick, some of the medical bills are paid for, some are not. What's really important? Do we trust in God? Jesus was getting at greed, which is that desire to possess when we don't need. It's not so much about money. A lot of people heard this gospel and say, well, it doesn't apply to me. I'm not rich. I'm not wealthy. As far as I know, there's nobody here as rich as Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or the Queen of England or Elon Musk or Nancy Pelosi or the Biden family. You can go on naming people that you know who have acquired wealth. We're not in their category. But what does apply to us is what's in our heart. You're here because you want to hear the word of God. And the word of God says, place your trust in him. Psalm 39 says, the phantom only, man goes his ways, like vapor only are his restless pursuits. He heaps up stores and knows not who will use them. Fear not when a man grows rich, when the wealth of his house becomes great, 
for when he dies, he shall take none of it. His wealth does not go down with him. We live in a country that's been sort of pushed in the direction of getting people to acquire and get more things. How many of you get advertising from Amazon? All the time. <laughs> they got your number. They know what your likes and dislikes are. Walmart knows what you like and dislike. All the big companies know what you like and dislike. All the advertising is targeted for you to get you to want more and more and more. We're all subject to it. I like things made out of down because it's light, keeps you warm. And I remember going out and searching out down comforters. Well, all I need is one, but I ended up with two. Do I need two? No, I need one. We never seem to ask ourselves, do I need it? No. It's what I want. But we are creatures of the Spirit. And Jesus, St. Paul says, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is of earth. Everything we possess, everything we have is a gift. It can be used for good or it can be used for ill. If all you do is gather it for yourself, for your own pleasure, do not share, do not help others, it's not for your good. Put to death then the parts of you that are earthly. Immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that leads to idolatry. That's what Jesus was getting at. And we all fall into that category at some point. If you take a look at your house, <laughs> some people's garages, you see them open, you wonder where they, they can't put a car in there. Why? There's so much clutter. But nobody seems to get rid of anything. We want things, but do we what, want what God wants? Do we want his will for us? Because God has the best thing waiting for us. He wants our happiness. He wants our fulfillment. And our fulfillment are found in the things of the spirit. We, in common with the animals, we have a, a nature in common with them, an animal nature. We have sense appetites. We are attracted by things of the sense. Eyes are made to see, hands are meant to touch, feel, etc. But we're not just animals. God has created us different. We are humans. He created us not with an animal soul. He created us with a human soul. A human soul that is an intellect, a mind to reason. And the reason is meant to know, to know the truth, to know God, to know things of the spirit, and to subject everything else to the spirit. So that we use everything properly.
Our holiness consists in doing the will of God. What is his will? Prayer, living a moral life, going to Mass on Sunday, doing corporal and spiritual acts of mercy out of love for our neighbor. This is what Pope Benedict said. Sanctity properly consists in the conformity to God's will expressed in the constant and exact fulfillment of the duties of our state in life. You, my brothers and sisters, can become holy in simply living the life that God gave you to live. Faithful husbands and wives, faithful fathers and mothers, faithful brothers and sisters, you become holy. You fulfill God's plan. And when you learn that possessions do not bring happiness, everything begins to fall into place. The very ordinary, mundane tasks that make up our lives are the means by which God will make us holy. And you don't need a lot of money for that. All you need is the desire to respond to the Spirit. Stop lying to one another since we have taken off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. That's what God wants for us. And that's what you're doing this day. You've come to hear the word of God. You heard it proclaimed. Whatever message, whatever God touched you, Listen to that. And during the week, meditate on it. Thank God for the things you have. And ask God to lead you further into holiness. God be praised.